Hey everyone, it's Rita with Everything Homemade and in this video I'm going to show you how to make such a delicious, mouth-watering, family-friendly soup that is utilizing dried vegetables from the garden. So this year I dried a ton of dried vegetables and I'm going to use them to make a really delicious chicken soup. But before we dive into making this soup, I would like to announce that the Everything Stevia cookbook is now ready to be ordered. So the pre-order is done, the first batch of books is actually being printed and I'll be shipping those soon and now it is ready to be ordered. So so you can definitely go to everything-homemade.com to order your cookbook. Now this is a pretty special cookbook. All the recipes are original and it utilizes stevia as your sweetener. There is whole wheat and gluten-free recipes. Obviously we're using stevia. I'm teaching you how to make a homemade stevia extract in here. So everything is sugar-free. It is also dairy-free as well you have the first chapter is just showing you how to grow stevia so ever wonder if you can grow stevia and harvest enough stevia leaves so you can grow your own sugar you definitely can 37 pages full of information on everything you want to know about stevia in depth in this book so i call it three books in one because it's a gardening book, it's a back to basic in the kitchen book, plus there's 160 um, and more recipes from granola to cookies to cakes to muffins to even how to make your own icing with your own dyes using no, just vegetables to make beautiful cakes all the way to ice creams and puddings and dressings. I mean, this is a jam-packed book. And... Uh, if it comes in paperback, like you see here, it is full color. Tons and tons of recipes are in here, all family friendly. I make these recipes for my family. I have six kids, so they've got to be quick. I mean, I want to whip up ingredients and, and uh, make awesome desserts, but not spend hours in the kitchen. So this is a really practical book. The other thing is it also comes in an ebook form. The, I also have a new ebook out as well, and it's called Back to Basics in the Kitchen. So it's taking how to make yogurt, how to make, um, and yogurt, the dairy yogurt and the vegan yogurt, how to make all your nut milks, how to make um, butters, like nut butters and seed butters, how to make chocolate. So if you want to make your own chocolate chips, like a, and everything like that with chocolate, I mean, sourdough bread, gluten-free breads, like it is jam-packed. That ebook is is also on the website just so check that out. The other thing is is I'm bringing my garden to you. I have seeds, lots of seeds. So everything that we grow in the garden year after year it is climatized to zone two and they're up for sale, so all the stuff we love. So tomatoes, corn, corn that we grow, whether it's rain and shine, it produces popcorn that grows up here in the north. Um, and squash, everything, and these seeds are climatized to our zone, and that's the key. So if you are a, a short gardener or a Canadian gardener or... Um, definitely check us out and there's going to be new seeds coming um, year after year as I save more and more of our varieties that we so love. So definitely check out our website everything-homemade.com. Let's make some soup. So many of you ask me about soups and what soups I make and especially the video that I did on sprouts. I have actually a pea soup shown there and I do make some specific soups but so many times the soups that I make are dynamic. It's whatever I have in the fridge at the time and leftover soup and even the pea soup that I make. I have the base but a lot of things that go into it just depends on what I got. So I'm going to show you a soup that utilizes dried vegetables that I have dried from the garden. So in this soup, 
I have right now I made in my slow cooker chicken the night before and when this chicken was slow cooking I added a lot of water to create a really delicious broth so all the all the nutrients from the bones were slow cooked into this broth. I also added a little bit of basil leaves, dried basil leaves, some margarine basil leaves, um, onion, dried onion, some um, dried garlic, and a little bit of curry. So it cooked in this, oh, and salt. So it cooked in this, and this can vary. I mean, if you want a little spicy kick, add some spice to it. If you don't like certain herbs, don't add the herbs. Like. I kind of go how I feel, kind of what my family call it, hershby dershby stuff into to the pot and, and it cooks. That's kind of my like, soup style. With that being said, I mean, you can even keep it simple. Just put some salt and pepper and let the chicken cook in that, in the slow cooker, and it'll still have that really nice chicken broth. I just wanted a little more depth of flavor. And I didn't have any like actual onions on hand and I didn't dry any onions this year so I just used the powder instead just to give it that nice flavor with it. So there's no right or wrong way to make a soup. It's just your way and for me it's one of the best ways of using leftovers and in this case I really crave soup right now so that's what I'm gonna make so like I said I did this chicken yesterday and so what we're gonna do is we are going to take some meat off the bones get the broth ready get fire that into a pot and then I'm gonna show you um, we have some dried corn that we're gonna throw in there I'm gonna do that first just to get that corn um, rehydrated because that's the longest one that's gonna take so I'm gonna get that going before everything else goes in then we're gonna head to the garden and we're gonna pull some root parsley out because that's the last thing in the garden and it's a really good substitute for potato delicious flavor and we're gonna wash that chop that up throw it in the soup then we're gonna add some dried um, beans I want to say dried beans, I mean dried green beans and yellow beans. We're going to throw in some dried carrots and um, we're going to have this at the end, this really nice vegetable chicken soup that has so much flavor in it. And it's just by, by putting all these fresh dried ingredients, you in dried food, you still have that delicious fresh um, garden taste it's locked into that that food and that's why I love it so much and we're at the end we're gonna just have a really nice soup for supper time so let's get started okay so what I have here I just got a cutting board some bowls and my slow cooker with the meat and broth in it and then off to the side here I just have a stock pot so let's begin and this is this is pretty simple. Um, I'm just going to set these aside and you guys can take a look and you can tell by the color that I added some curry in here it has a beautiful color to it. And I'm just going to grab my chicken out of here and it just falls off the bones. And what I'm going to do is one of the bowls I'm just going to add in the chicken and the other bowl I'm going to add in, you know, like the cartilage pieces and the bones. And uh, so I'm just going to do this right now and and clean this up and then we'll move to the next step.
All right, now that I have every, all the bones out, to the best of my knowledge, there is, as you can see, still some meat chunks in here. I'm not worried about that. That can just kind of cook down as I cook the other stuff, and it's not that big of a deal. The biggest thing is getting most of the bones. Now, if you're really, really picky about it, you could heat this up, strain it, get all this out, have a pure broth, get all the bones. I don't worry about it. I might have missed one or two small ones, but I'm just serving it to my family. And there's, I mean, for them just to put a little bone off the side, it's not that big of a deal. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, and uh, I just kind of run my hand through to feel for for any bones and it's pretty good it's pretty good you'll always miss one or two but it's pretty good okay so this I can smell it it's jam-packed with flavor and oh it's a really good start so I love starting my soups like this because I got a good base now really good base so this is about eight cups in here and what I'm going to do now is just wash up my hands and then I'm going to spill this into my stock pot a little bit interesting to do this in front of the camera it's because of the angle so if this is a little, look, look, looks a little awkward it kind of is but anyway scrape out your bowl you get the point here scrape all that goodness out into your pot and then what I'm going to do now is just add in the dried corn because this corn was just dried on the cob it takes a little longer to um, rehydrate than the other ones like the beans and the and the and the um, carrots that I'm going to add in. So now what I'm going to do is just add this half a cup of orchard corn that's dried and you can see it here. Look at that beautifully dried corn. And this is such a beautiful corn because it grows in northern areas. It's a short growing plant but let me tell you rain or shine this is a good producer and this is our eating corn it's so sweet it's an heirloom and let me tell you it's the best corn ever and we actually have a harvest from it it's non GMO I mean and we dry this is just beautiful corn and you can actually order seeds off our website um, because I sell the seeds everyone should have this corn growing it's great in backyards it's short like I said the plant is only like three feet tall it's just such a wonderful corn so this is what I'm going to be adding in here and I'm only adding half a cup because you got to remember I'm going to be adding other ingredients and this is dried so this is going to bulk and you, you know a half a cup is going to bulk to a cup and a half of corn so you don't want to go overboard it doesn't look like much now but you have to remember with dried vegetables that it bulks and I'm going to be adding some more in here so what I'm going to do is just fill this in and I'm going to turn on my hot plate just to low what I'm going to do is as this heats up and the corn hydrates I'm going to go out into the garden and I'm going to harvest the root parsley by that time this will be warm and as I'm chopping up the root parsley it just will give that little extra time it needs that way when I add in all my rest of my dried vegetables, everything will cook evenly. So that's what I'm gonna do. And this is just really on low. So I don't want it to boil while I'm outside gathering my root parsley. I just want it to warm up and slowly hydrate. So I'm gonna let it do its thing here. So come out with me into the garden. Come on, Levi. Okay, as you can see, our garden is, well, basically done. And this root parsley is the last among with the um, Swiss chard, but otherwise everything is harvested, brought in, and dried. So 
this was actually an experimental crop this year. Whoa, I lost my balance there. This was actually an experimental crop this year and I'm going to be growing it again because it is such a great substitute for potatoes. It tastes so good that I think it tastes better than potatoes. I mean, you can basically do, you can do a so many things that you do with potatoes with root parsley as well. So to help us out, we have Meadow. Meadow, can you say hi to everyone? Hi. <laughs> she just turned four and uh, she's here to help, aren't you? And then we have a new addition to our family. This is Levi right here. So he is going to be, well, watching us, right? With us. So welcome Levi to the Everything Homemade family. And uh, so let's get started. So Meadow, why don't you go around the other side? And we're just gonna start pulling these, uh, these plants here. They're pretty easy to pull. And they just got, this one's a little guy. But you can see they got these funky roots, really funky roots. So we're just gonna pull them out here. And I want about 20 of them for this soup because I want this soup to kind of eat like a stew slash a soup. Lots of goodness in there. And they got these like little roots. They're pretty funky. Look at this. And it's so tasty. Good job, did you get one? Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So just uh I broke it through a little. Did you? Okay, yeah. so just add it to the pile. Their metal. Mm. Yeah, then got this one stuck. Oh look at this guy. He's big. Who did you get the oh. did you get him stuck? Yeah, I got him. Oh, there we go. Did you break his root? Yeah, a little bit. We'll just add him in. So I got a bowl here and like I said, we just want about about 20 of these. So keep pulling, Meadow. Keep pulling. Uh, you got a heart? Okay, try it. Oh, that's a big guy, Meadow. Okay, here, I'll loosen it. Okay, try it, try it again. Try it again. Pull it. No, no, this one. This one right here. Get on there. Get a pull. Pull, pull. Pull it. There you go. Good job. Good job. Levi, are you making? <laughs> he made a... Is that better? I broke it through a little Oh, you silly dog. I broke it through a Yeah, you broke ladder. the root? You know what? Making soup is all about enjoying the people around you as well. It's great. Okay, let's get another one. There's a turkey in your garden. Is there a turkey in my garden? There is a turkey. We gotta get him out after. Take a look. There's a turkey in my garden. We'll get him out after, okay, Meadow? Okay, so how many do we got here? Can't get out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, we're only at eleven. We better get going here. Come on. Do we need more than oh, eleven. We do. We need twenty. Oh, we need twenty of them. It's eleven. One, so that's twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, seven, ten. The ten. Okay, well, count again. I'll spread them out. There's a little bit more than 10 here. There you go. Can you count them again? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. And that would make, and then after 12 comes? I don't know. 13. 13. 13. Okay, so 13, then what? 14? Oh, Ooh, he's a big guy. There's 14. Funky roots. It does. 14, 15, 16, and oh. 17. Yep, 17. Good job. Nine. Another one. 18. Yeah, good job. 18. Oh. 19. Yeah. 
20. Good job. Good counting. That would be 20. That, that, would, be that would be 20. That would be 20. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to take these tops off the roots. So we can put the roots in here, okay? Mm -hmm. So take the tops off and just make a pile. And we're actually going to use some of these tops. And we're going to chop them up at the end. It makes a delicious garnish because the, the tops to the parsley root actually well tastes like parsley i would it's not as as pungent a flavor let's say as curly parsley but it still really gives a nice parsley flavor so we're going to just twist the tops off just like she's doing right now just like that and then you put the root into the bowl and just make a pile of the parsley tops right here right there yeah perfect so let's continue to do that I don't like that. Well, I guess it's not good. Yeah, that one isn't. That you can get rid of that. I found that yep. on the twist. That's right. Perfect. And then this one mm -hmm. is a funky guy. He's a funky guy. Oh, we got them all tangled. Okay, pull, pull. There you go. Okay, so these roots, these parsley roots are good. They're very good, aren't they? Well, some aren't. Yeah. Get those ones out. Okay. Yeah, you're pulling out the dead. That's good. Yep. I think there's one. Right you're going to be a little, little herb expert, aren't you? No more dead. No more dead. Okay, add it to the pile. Good girl. Okay, let's continue. So are all those tops actually good? Yes, these tops are actually good. Okay, Meadow, let's head to the house. We're ready to go. So we're going to head back in, wash this up, chop it, and get it that into that um, wonderful broth. So as you can see here, when we got in the house, you can see how it's warming up. It's becoming way more liquidy and just a really, really nice broth coming here. And, uh, and the corn, it's in here. Where is it? There it is. And uh, it's still quite hard, but it's slowly hydrating. So that's exactly where I want it to be. So that fun we had outside definitely did not hurt my pot in the house. Okay, let's get washing our root parsley and chopping it up. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is get this root, par root parsley into the sink, just like so. And using cold water, you want to just put that cold water over it. Now, I'm going to teamwork a little bit. Grace is going to come in and she's going to be doing this part while I'm going to be chopping over here. And uh, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to scrub this clean. And then she's going to break off these roots. And these roots, we actually keep and chop them up like um, parsnips with a little bit of coconut oil and we crisp them. Oh, so good. I'll show you that on, on um, a side, side video. For right now, you're just going to take off the roots because we'll do something different with these roots. And I just want this big root right here. Okay, Grace? Mm -hmm. Just like that. So this is what I'm after. It gets tangled with a lot of dirt here, so sometimes just break it apart, get all that dirt out, and then we are good to go. Then you put them on my cutting board, and I will chop, okay? Yep. So now over here, what I have is just a bowl here, and I'm gonna just chop these little ones off because they're not as nice, and you know what, you can chop them however big or small, I mean, you like them. There's no right or wrong. I mean, I don't take the skins off and I just kind of go like around them. Just like that. And like these little bits, I don't even worry about 
you kind of just go into the soup. So really this is pretty, pretty easy going. Chopping, nothing that pretty. Okay, so my bowl's full once again here, and Grace is now done washing, so thank you so much, Grace. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna make a, basically, I mean, it's eight cups here, so we're going to be a, a solid, probably 10 cups um, all together here. I just got a couple more to go. And then what we're going to do is we've got a little bit of a mess to clean up um, and we're going to tidy that up and like I said these little roots here, these little roots here, we're going to make a delicious just a little side from them and uh, fry them up till they're crisp and oh they taste so good. So never waste anything, right Grace? Yeah. Never want to waste anything. So there we go, about 10 cups. Let's get that into the soup. So in that 15 minutes it took us to clean them and cut them, you can tell the different consistency of the broth here. Let's tilt this down, it's a little bit hard, but it's way more liquidy. And what I'm gonna do now is add in, is add in my parsley root. And parsley root really cooks up nicely. Um, it's like potato, like look at it, it looks like an added potato, that's so great. But it's just so jam packed with nutrients um, and I just love it. And being on a keto diet or trying to lower my carbs um, as I get, I get older, this is just such a great alternative. It just tastes absolutely delicious. So add that in. Now we need to just add in our dried vegetables to give this a little color. Let's give it some color and some more depth of flavor that those dried vegetables are going to give. So now what I have are the containers of my dried um, vegetables. So this was the corn that I just had put in right at the beginning. And these are the dried beans. So take a look at how, how interesting they look when they're dried. Okay, they really shrink. So I'm going to put one cup of these dried beans, and these ones are a mix of dried green and yellow beans. So there's one cup, and yes, Meadow, you can have one. Grab a bean, she, she likes to eat them dried, just as it is, and because we blanch them, and then dry them, they're easy to eat and they really hydrate faster as well. Are they good? Yeah, you like them, don't you? Okay, so the next thing that, that we need to do here is we need to have the carrots. And again, these have been blanched and then dried. These are all from the garden, so I'm gonna do about a cup of carrots as well. 
Now I'm going to turn on my hot plate. I'm going to get it, I want to get it up to that boil. So I'm going to put it on to medium high heat. And what I'm going to do is now throw in, well, I guess dump in the rest of my dried vegetables here. And I'm just going to mix it up. Do remember that you got to have enough broth to make sure that these hydrate properly. And I'm just going to mix it up here. And I may add in, I think I'm going to add in about three more cups of just water into this. If I had some more broth on hand, I would just add some more broth, but I don't. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water. Because I, the way it looks, it looks like I just don't have enough broth that the rest is just going to suck it up. So I'm just going to, that looks a lot better. You see that? that that's the cons that's about what I want. So also taste. You always want to taste um, your broth. It needs some salt. It needs some salt. Right now I'm going to let all those garden flavors kind of mingle together right now. But it's a making of something absolutely delicious. What I need is for those those um, vegetables to really just simmer in and release um, the flavors. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of salt here. And I'm going to put at least, you know, a half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of salt. It really is lacking salt here. We need some salt in there. And that'll, that'll really help with the flavor. So I'm going to leave it like that and just let this basically simmer for the next uh, 20, 25 minutes. Once it reaches that boil, um, then I will, will start putting the timer in and cook this to something absolutely amazing. So I just thought about it and I just put it in, didn't realize my camera was off, but I added some mushrooms here too because we got some dried mushrooms and I was like man that'll add some really nice flavor as well to this soup with some nice dried mushrooms and these are just like white button mushrooms and, and you can see them right there. I'm just going to add those in and I'm checking my broth here because we're just about to boil and when you're doing these soups you just kind of keep your eye on it and and add things as as you think fit like there's no like I said no no right or wrong way in making soup so it looks like I still got lots of good broth things are hydrating beautifully and I'm going to just put back on this lid and now I'm going to um, put 25 minutes in that timer and just cut down the heat a little bit so it's just leaves it at a really nice simmer. Okay, so let's check the soup here. We're about halfway through cooking time. Looking good, looking good. The smells, oh man. Man, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, oh, beautiful. But what I've noticed is that I'm gonna add a little more water. Just gonna add a tad bit of water. I'm just losing a little bit too much. Again, just kind of tweak it as you go. Um, I would like a little bit more more liquid. Um, so add a couple extra, you know, extra five minutes. Get it right back up to to that boil, and uh, it should it should be good. So I just added two cups here. More. I just wanted a little bit, a little bit more liquid because the the beans are absorbing quite a bit. So I'm just tweaking it, and let's just taste it. Oh, it just literally tastes like a garden in my pot. Dried vegetables from your garden has such a magnificent flavor. I mean, it's jam-packed with garden flavor. And that's exactly what this broth and this soup is doing. So I'm going to add probably another 10 minutes onto my cooking time just because I added that more water in, which is no, no problem. I'm just going to do a little test here on these. These are still pretty firm. Another 10 minutes. That's no big deal. Put the lid back on and 
and continue simmering. As we're waiting for the soup, let's just address the tops here for a moment. So root parsley has some beautiful tops, but they got a lot of stem to it, especially when it's so mature at the end of the season. What I like to do is just take these um, leaves off. Otherwise, this doesn't chop up really nice. And it's kind of, it's not great eating when it's this old. Now when root parsley leaves are young, you can literally use the entire leaf and stem because it's, it's like really thin, like up here where it's nice and thin and it just tastes awesome. But I mean, we're basically at the end of October and things are way past their prime. So it just needs to take a little bit of more effort into taking the leaves off here so you know you don't got floating big stems so that's what i'm going to do here and then i'm just going to chop this up really nice and fine to get it basically um in the soup in the last minute you i find you don't want to parsley in too early into the cooking process it's a delicate herb and it really tastes good as an after kind of like an afterthought or just right right when you're ready to serve mix it in and that way it retains that really nice fresh green color and um, and flavor as well Let's chop up the parsley. So let's check on the soup. Oh, look at that. Isn't that just magnificent? It absolutely looks delicious. So the next thing we need to add in, since this is just about done, is this wonderful chicken. Remember we took all the chicken off the bones? Well, now it's time to add all of that chicken meat back in. And I like leaving it chunky. I mean, you could definitely make these chicken pieces a little smaller, but we're gonna, oh, and there's a bone. Let's take that out. Where did that get in there? But anyway, I like to have kind of chunky pieces. So now basically what I wanna do is just warm this chicken up for a couple of minutes, and then the soup is done. So now let's add in the finishing touch. Soup is done. The parsley that we chopped is going in. Just give it a light mix. And now it's time to serve. So take a look at the finished product. 
jam-packed with flavor. You can see the beautiful parsley, the corn, the carrots and mushrooms and beans all within this delicious broth. Such a wonderful supper for a fall evening.